Hey guys, we're interrupting the head re retopology tutorial with this very exciting news this week. So I just want to do a quick video showing you one of the cool things that came out this week, which is uh, ZBrush 2021.7, which is the newest uh, patch in ZBrush. And um, we have some very, very cool stuff. So we're going to take a look quickly at the at the features here. And then I'm going to show you how they are actually working inside of ZBrush. Some of them. I haven't had enough time to actually like play with all of the tools uh, or all of the new things. But uh, I'm going to show you some of it. So we have the new knife tool, which is going to be a game changer pretty much for hard surface modeling. Because now we're going to be able to model and cut um, tools in a better way than the normal trim uh, curve or the um, uh, cut tool that we had before. I'll, I'll show you the differences as well. We have this one. I haven't played with this one yet. But it's a very cool thing. It's called Stage It. And it seems that you're going to be able to save two different transformations of your uh, tools. So your tools can be in one place and then you can pose a character in a different place or in a different pose. And you're going to be able to switch between them uh, without any issues. Uh, it says here that you're all actually going to be able to work with uh, like subdivision brushes, like everything. So it's a very interesting thing, um, especially for those people that do a lot of concept uh, art and concept design in ZBrush. I think this is going to be really, really good for them. Uh, the bevel tool, this one, amazing, very, very cool. I've always said that my weak point is hard surface, and hopefully with all of these new tools, I'm going to start trying to, to learn all of them to make sure that I can build something a little bit nicer than what I usually do. Uh, but the bevel tool seems like a very, very nice brush. We're not going to touch on it right now on this uh, video, but uh, we're going we're gonna to take a look at it later when we do some other modelers. Uh, this one I want to show you, the interpolate brush, which is really, really cool. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it just yet, so so we'll wait for this. And this one, I haven't uh, taken a, a deep look on this one, but it's about a mirror function. So you're going to be able to mirror the poly paint and masks from one side to another in a post mesh, which again, for concept things, I think it's going to be really, really cool. As you guys know, my main uh, focus, the, the main things that I do as a, as a job is production art. So more often than not, I do not post my characters inside of Sirius. I do the full production pipeline, and then, then they get rigged, animated, or whatever. Uh, so m all of these tools, they're really cool from a concept perspective, from a, from an illustration perspective. Not so useful, I would say, for, for production, uh, but nonetheless, they're really, really cool. Uh, this one is also very cool. I haven't seen it before. It's just last, which you're going to be able to modify the last stroke you did. And instead of having to redraw it and change the depth and stuff, you're just going to move this slider and, and get a different result. And yeah, many more. So let's jump into Seabrush real quick. And I'm going to load uh, this demo head right here to show you first the interpolate brush. So that one, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be in the uh, brush. Uh, do, 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 where is it? Modifiers. Nope. Mm. It's in the stroke panel. So in the stroke panel, we have the modifiers. Now, where is it? Here, interpolate. It's, it's, it's right there. Okay. So what does this do? Um, what this do? Uh, well, what this function does is you're gonna draw something. Like, I don't know, let's say I'm just going to grab my Damien Stander and I want to draw like a like a scar here on the character. Let's let's divide a couple of times and I'm going to draw something here and then I'm going to draw another line like down here. And if I go into the stroke and I hit the interpolate button, what this thing will do or should do. Oh, I think it changed. So one and then two stroke interpolate. And it will interpolate between those uh, marks. Now, since I drew this first one down and this second one from uh, from the front to the back, you can see that there's actually a twist going on there, which again, pretty cool. I saw this thing being used for like hard surface stuff. So I don't know, like let's say we want to do, I'm gonna go with clay buildup, and I'm gonna do like some paneling kind of thing here, and then I want this to interpolate all the way to like down here. I just draw those two things and I hit interpolate and you're going to see that we get this very nice effect. Now, right now we're getting 10 interpolations. You can see that here, the stroke count. So if we bring these guys down and we interpolate, we're going to have less. And uh, and yeah, again, you can create some very interesting things with this uh, element. Now, I'm going to show you one thing that I think is going to be very cool for this particular element uh, in, in my line of business. The kind of things that I usually do is more like character. So one thing that I found about this, or that I thought it could work, let's let's give it a go, is with uh, details like horns and and scales and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go here to my chisel creature, and if I grab, for instance, this like horn, 
I can start with like a very big horn like here in the front and then go to like a very small horn down here. And if we go again into stroke and interpolate, it will try to interpolate in the best possible way those two things, which again, very cool. Like imagine trying to do like a dragon, right? That has a, like a lot of spikes going from the top to the, to the bottom. So I can start with like a very big one here and then like a smaller one like back here. And then I just go transform, sorry, stroke, interpolate. Uh, I think it does remember the, the camera movement. So let's go here and here. And then we say stroke, interpolate. And there we go, like we get more spikes, right? And then we can continue, we can do like, okay, I'm gonna do one more here, and then I'm gonna go all the way over here with smaller spikes, stroke, interpolate, and there we go. So imagine trying to create like a character with a lot of spikes, a lot of plates, a lot of scales, and, and you don't want to draw one by one, you can very easily interpolate this, uh, guys, and interpolate works with every single brush that you can see here inside of Seaver. So even the insert brushes, right now I'm using, um, what's the word? Um, the the chisel brushes but if you go let's go for like a, i don't know like this emm clothing let's try doing like a button or something and i do a button uh okay has subdivision levels let's delete low Oop. geometry delete lower so i'm just gonna have one there and then have one smaller right here and i'm gonna say stroke interpolate and there you go four little things right there. So very useful tool, guys. The interpolate tool is going to be a really, really useful tool. I think people are going to be finding even more creative ways to use it. But the fact that you can just like mark one thing and then go all the way to the other thing and mark it as well, I think it's going to be cool. Uh, one thing I want to try, I haven't tried it. What if I do like a positive, let me grab my create build up. Let's say like I do like a positive, positive thing and then like a negative stroke. Does it, does it interpolate? No, it does not. Okay, so it, it does not interpolate from like uh, C add and C sub, uh, apparently, or, or at least for now. Uh, maybe later that they, they might add that function, but I don't see any option that will uh, say that. Now, here, instead of the stroke, we also have the adjust last. Uh, let me see if it works the way I think it works. So I'm going to just like draw here. And then on the stroke, if we push the adjust last, yeah, look at that. Like you do a stroke. It, this is very common when we're doing like scars or something. Like let's say I'm, I'm going to add like a scar to the character and I go like, yeah, he's going to have like a really big scar here. And then my boss is coming right here on my shoulder and he's like, hey, you know what? That That's a little bit too much. I can just adjust it here without having to redraw it or anything. Just adjust here with that just last. I'm actually going to add those two things to my <laughs> to my uh, my personal thing here, my... Um, element so i'm gonna use my interpolate let's go there and we definitely need the interpolate strokes right there and i'm gonna add my adjust last as well there we go so now we have more stuff in our uh in our custom um in our custom palette so yeah that's the that's the first one of the first tools that i wanted to show you the interpolate tool the other one which you saw the demo and i'm gonna copy the demo pretty much is the knife tool so i'm gonna make this a polymesh 3d and I'm going to divide it a couple of times and delete lower so we have a lot of resolution. And usually when we work with hard surface or when I've, been, when I've done hard surface, one of the tools that I used to utilize the most, the, the most was this clip curve. Now, the clip curve is really cool because uh, so for those of you that have used it before, it allows you to pretty much just push the surface of uh, whatever you're uh, sculpting towards the gradient, right? Like any, any like sort of, let's turn off perspective, any any curved brush that has like a gradient, whatever is on the outside of the gradient is gonna be pushed towards the, the dotted line. So this was really useful to like do this sort of cuts and create some interesting shapes. The only problem with the, with the curve brush is the fact that you're not actually deleting anything. Like what you're doing is you're taking all of the polygons that you have and pretty much just like flattening towards the, that line. And uh, it, it, you, it, it creates some issues uh, every now and then. So a couple of versions ago, a couple of years ago, I think like two years ago, they added this um, one, which was called the slice curve. And the slice curve was meant to be the solution for that sort of thing. So the slice curve, what it does, as you can see, it slices and it actually cuts the geometry and creates new triangles where it needs them. Unfortunately, the slice, the slice brush does not work with symmetry. So the thing that we had to do here was create this guy, and then go to like, um, uh, where is it? Deformation, mirror this thing, and then go back to geometry and they say modify topology, mirror and then well. So if you wanted to like cut these things and uh, like, let's say you want this piece right here and then you would just like delete hidden and dynamish. And that way we would get this this shape, which I mean, it, it, it was 
easy enough to do, just a little bit time consuming. So now this guy's added, this crazy guy's added this new tool called the knife tool, knife curve right here. And what the knife curve does is it cuts, uh, we don't, we, let's delete hidden or lower, there we go. It cuts the geometry and it creates new polygroups. As you can see, it just like gets rid of us, like <laughs> go away, I don't need you anymore. Another thing that I used to teach my students quite a bit was if you wanna delete something from your character while you're working on Dynamesh, you have to select the lasso, uh, hide the parts that you wanna select, and then just uh, remesh it. Delete hidden and then remesh. No need anymore. If you don't want anything, just cut it. Just cut it like this and that's it. You can even go here to the select lasso, knife lasso, and just like cut anything and boom, it's gone. And as you can see, uh, it works with uh, symmetry. Very, very cool. So the knife lasso is gonna be amazing. So what they did in the demo, and I'm gonna try to just like mimic it real quick. They used the knife curve here uh, to create like this sort of like very sci-fi-ish shape. So anytime you use this tools, you can double tap or single tap to create a curve. So I can like create a curve here and, and round this off, create this sort of like mesh thing. And then I can go like double tap and the double tap will create uh, hard angles. Look at that beautiful shape. Now, for instance, let's see here, we want like a cut there. And then up here, maybe we want like a, like a cut here. You can use a space bar to move this around. And look at this beautiful shape, like trying to do this thing um, like with the, with the curve before, it was, it was really, really difficult. And now, as you can see, well, let me see if I can do like something interesting there. What happened? No, it's it's not doing exactly what I want. So let's just do a traditional like something like this. I'm not sure why symmetry is not working there. Let me give it another shot. I mean, one thing I can do here if I, I need to uh, here, I can definitely use my mirror and weld. And that way we're gonna duplicate the whole thing. So yeah, I mean, look at how easy it was to create this very nice sci-fi shape. Now combine this with the uh, with the interpolate thing. Let's go for instance for some like uh, bolts or something like this EMM machine parts. Uh, like I like this knot right here. And I'm just gonna go one there, and then one here, and I can go here interpolate, and look at that. <laughs> Building robots, guys, is gonna be such an easy thing now with all of these tools, and it's it's gonna be really really fun. Now, of course, again, taking into account that uh, by adding all of these things, like if if a production artist comes and say, hey, uh, you're gonna have to retopo that thing, right? Like you're gonna have to do a proper retopology to make sure that the silhouette is cached and everything. All of those details, even though they're really cool and really easy to do now, um, in production they do take an impact. So that's why sometimes you're gonna see a lot of the of the 3D artwork where things are a little bit more simplified because it's not the same thing to create something that looks amazingly cool and something that can go into the production pipeline in a very easy way. Uh, so yeah, that's it guys. Those, these are two tools that I just wanted to show you, short video today. Uh, I just wanted to do a quick demonstration of the interpolation tool and the, um, what's the word? The doo -doo -doo, the knife tool, which you saw there, which is again, very, very cool. I think that's my favorite tool right now. Like, just look at this. Like, try to do this in Maya, you're gonna go crazy. Now, of course, this topology, not perfect, uh, but it's good enough. It's, it's a really good topology and you can create a bake from this or bring this into, into Maya just as is and you're gonna be just fine. So check the, check the tools, update your ZBrush, play around with it. Let me know what you think about this new update and I'll see you back tomorrow. Tomorrow we're gonna finish the uh, the phase. I already recorded that video, so it's just gonna be up there for you so that you can finish it. And uh, there's a little bit of a surprise for Monday. So hang on tight and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.